Sometimes you just gotta make a bite. Oh, there he is. Look at that. Great big one. Ooh, ooh. Mm, this spot's gotta have fish. Ah, I got him. Good one, boy. Good one. Nice fish. <laughs> that did not take a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Instincts. All fish have them. But all instinctive behavior is not the same. Some basic instincts are universal, shared by many species. All fish must feed, for example, and the urge to find and capture food drives their daily activity throughout most of the year. Other instincts are specific to individual species, defining their characteristic behavior. Bass and walleyes, for example, often prefer to feed in different areas, eat different prey species, and respond to different forms of lures and tactics. Appealing to a fish's basic instincts means fishing in the right areas, using fundamental methods that are likely to catch them. But beyond that, the better you specifically target and cater to each species' unique instinctive quirks, tendencies, and preferences, the more and bigger fish you catch. Today, on The Edge, we use the unique sound and vibration of clacking crankbaits to prompt smallmouth bass into striking. Being naturally curious and excitable, smallies can often be triggered into biting by correctly appealing to their aggressive instincts. Got it. Oh, there we go. Next, we jig up walleyes on a late winter ice bite as they gather in areas that simultaneously attract other predator species as well. Because sometimes, as in late winter, different species instinctively gather in similar feeding locales. And if you're on the money for one species, you just might be on target for others as well. Look at the size of this animal. <laughs> oh no, that's a jack. All fish have a multitude of senses, each fine-tuned to their basic nature. Bass, for example, primarily locate and attack food through a combination of sight, sound, and vibration. So we use lures that simultaneously appeal to all these instincts. Water is dense, and sound travels five times faster in water than it does in air. Rattling, vibrating crankbaits expand the area of attraction surrounding the lure, alerting bass to their approach long before a fish sees it. Oh, oh, big black just oh, look at that. Man. Whoa, man. Oh, boy, did you suck that thing? I guess. Whoa. Wait, oh, there he is. Right away? Yep. Well, come on. Did you get him on the first cast? First cast, exactly. Nice. Little tall, little one? Nope. Good one. Is it? Yeah. Change of colors. Change oh, of yeah. color. Boy, they came up, they were looking at that pink one. So I went to this pearl colored one and First cast and he lunged no, it. I, I want to see if it stays that way. Come here, Buster. I like that little craw colored. Yeah, those patterns on that are really so good. nice. Some of the craw colors are really great. You know, one thing about smallmouth that's so much different than uh, a largemouth or spots is these fish are really excitable. You can get them turned on 
really quick with a lot of different things. You know, they like flashy colored baits. They like things that go erratic, uh, a zigzag around a little bit. They really get excited. They're, I guess you could call them crankable. And uh, sound is another one of those elements, things that make a lot of noise, flash, wiggle, wobble. And I believe that's why this single chamber knocker that makes a unique sound, but a sound is so effective with this family uh, of baits. Crankbaits have many characteristics, size, shape, diving depth, productive speed range, color, action, sound and vibration. Each factor should be evaluated in terms of degrees. Bigger and bolder isn't always better because bass sometimes prefer smaller, subtler lures. Lures that run deep aren't necessarily best, particularly when the bass are shallow. And sometimes a certain lure profile or color pattern could be hot. Less understood by anglers are the aspects of sound, vibration, and action. These can range from loud and extreme to relatively silent and subtle and anything in between. On any given day, bass may prefer certain combinations of these factors responding to lures with the right stuff while ignoring others. Rappelous clacking family of lures features a single ball clacking inside a steel chamber, which produces a deeper, distinctive thump compared to smaller BBs rattling around inside a hollow-bodied lure. The clack and minnow has a long, thin profile, and the clack and crank is shorter and thicker body and has a much more aggressive vibrating action. Experiment well, with both and one. let the yeah. fish tell you which one they prefer on any given day. You know, you put uh, uh, a set of, and we've done this before, let me put her back a second. You put a set of earphones on and drop a system, in, uh, you know, and drop a mic into the water. Even on fairly calm days like this, you hear all kinds of sounds. These fish hear everything that's happening. And uh, uh, lakes that uh, have a lot of boat traffic and people splashing and playing and that, they get conditioned to that. It doesn't bother them. You get in uh, bodies of water up north that are not uh, used a lot. The fish naturally uh, sense that as a negative. But uh, you know they, they know what's happening in, in their environment. And uh, big windy shorelines, when you get a lot of wind, we don't have a lot of wind today, but it, it riles up the sound on the windy side of the lake is amazing. But those fish can distinguish all kinds of different sounds and they know where food is at. And that vibration, that single knocker, as an example, has a complete different sound in that water column and it draws those fish in. You know, this is something different to the fish and it's amazing. Uh, I don't think we give them as much credit for a critter with a pea-sized brain. They know a lot. You know, this bait is, it's a minnow bait, but it's got a lot of different characteristics. Let me reel it in and show you. First off, different than the X-Wrap, it's got a square lip, which gives it a little bit different wiggle in the water. It's not as erratic. It straightens out a little bit better. It's obviously got this clacking chamber in it, which sounds a lot different than normal, uh, normal baits. And it also has a slow sink in fresh water. So these fish do not see that a lot. A lot of baits, uh, minnow baits, are neutrally buoyant or else rise. This thing will stop in the water and then it'll slowly drop down. And like if I see a fish come in back here, I'll just let some line out to have Al kick up the trolling motor and I will just walk that thing and it'll sink. I'll pop it up, it'll slowly sink, I'll pop it up. And it's something that these fish have not seen before. So that's another little triggering factor that uh, can get you more bites. You know, there's a lot of different uh, retrieves that you can do with a minnow bait, and particularly this uh, clacking minnow. You know, you can do your standard twitch pause, you know, your standard jerk bait. Ooh, there's one on it. Jerk bait retrieve. You can just reel and pause, and then you can uh, just straight reel it in. What you want to do is vary your retrieves and figure out what works on every day, and it may change throughout the day. So you're constantly shucking and jiving, trying different things. You got it? Oh, there we Ooh. go. Look at this. Oh. Are you jealous? I am jealous. Are you I jealous? I won't come up for you. <laughs> you did. I know. I like that. I like you bringing that clack and crank in there. You wake them up, and then I come in and bust them. 
Boy, they are spunky. Be careful with them. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, right oh, here, they're in, this we're in the pocket. Like, feels like a big one. Boy, I had them way out on the top of the cast. I've seen a boy, I haven't seen the size. Of, oh, no, she's not, she's not a whopper. Spunky, huh? Yeah, just. You know, when I fish uh, twitch baits like this black and minnow, uh, I like to, I prefer to fish it on braid. And uh, right now I got this quantum spooled up with Suffix 832. It's the newest breed of braid. And the specs on this line are, are off the charts. I can't explain those to you, but the proof is in the performance. This stuff handles uh, like no other braid on the market. Oh, there we go. Big boy out. He's really getting on him oh. pretty good there now. I'm going to have to maybe get a, a flat bait out. I'm throwing a six and a half foot medium action Quantum Tour Edition rod. This is that new smoke reel, smoke bait casting reel. And if you fish a lot of bass, you heard guys talking about this new smoke reel. It's become real, real popular in bass fishing circles. Yeah, it's just a honey of a reel. He's been really wailing on him in back of the boat. Next time I want a fishing partner, I don't know if I'm going to call you or not. I'm going to leave you in the editing suite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Got him. These lower guys. Oh, there's there are four fish with them, Al. Let me see if I can convert it. Look. There's four what, fish what with them. They're right behind. Oh, they're still on it. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that other. Look at the size of that one. Holy mackerel. Look I see at him. It, I see it, I see Holy it. cow, he's chasing my. He's chasing me. I know it, I know it. Here, get him. I got a crankbait. I don't have a jig. Wow, that okay. other one is twice the size of this thing. Well, you got to oh, get it. Oh, man. Look at that. Oh, I got the other one. I got the other man. one. The hook came out, and I got this other one. The big one hit it. <laughs> the big he's one hit the it. Little one, the little one came up, and you got the big mold. How do you like them apples? I know how to produce. smokes. That was, I was going to say that little guy, if all of a sudden he, got, he gained about four pounds, <laughs> I went, what in the world? Boy, that's a big fish. That is a big one, huh? Yeah, if that's not a testament to these hooks, is it? The, the hooks popped out, this other fish was chasing around that little smallmouth, and, and look how I got him. And I'm not even really babying him. Okay, wow. Get her oh, this in. This guy's, I know, I'm just, get her in, get her in. Boy, this is a tank. Well, come here. There we go. Wow, 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 Al, look at that thing. That is a huge, that was probably one of the biggest bass I've caught in a long time. You know, there's a lot of factors that go into uh, triggering big fish like this to bite, and sound is definitely one of them. Man, that's huge. Bye bye. Late winter in the remote Sunset Country region of northwestern Ontario triggers a reawakening of underwater activity as winter gives way to the approaching rebirth of spring. <laughs> this is what late ice is all about. Jerry, you better come and give me a hand, yeah. buddy. Fish of all species are instinctively on the move, away from their midwinter haunts, repositioning in anticipation of the coming spring season. Some, like pike and walleyes, begin gathering outside shallow spawning locations where they will deposit their eggs shortly after ice out. Others, like fall spawning lake trout, simply gather along the edges of the shallows where bait fish also congregate prior to their own spring fling to come. Big bull, you can really see. We're fishing up in sunset country where I live and uh, we have the benefit of being able to fish for walleyes till real late in the season, April 15th, uh, extended season, so it's we can get out and take advantage of this prime time bite. I can't see him yet. Yeah, this is great. We've been doing this for uh, for years now, Jeff, and it's always Well, it's so prime fun time. being out on the ice this time of year when it's... We know. had today a high on my truck said 58 degrees, and it's the middle of March. <laughs> your first drop down, you're hooked up with the big fish. When it comes to ice fishing, it simply is not any more fun than this. It isn't. Yeah, I just I got a little it. six pound leader on there, so we're gonna, we're gonna don't, be don't babying worry. him a little bit. I'm more confident <laughs> in it, but no, they just eat it. You got a big trout I on, think man. we got the, 
the other benefit of fishing in Sunset Country, <laughs> we got the multi-species thing going on. I think we've made up our mind this is not going to be a walleye. At late ice, walleyes and other species instinctively gather outside river mouths, bays, and neck down areas with a little bit of current. Hummingbird's Ice 55 385 CI combo is an awesome tool for pinpointing these locations. Electronic mapping provides a dramatic advantage for quickly locating prime fishing spots and efficiently drilling holes on and around them. Hydrographic GPS maps are often so accurate that you can pull up to potential areas and punch holes along the contour by simply looking at the map rather than having to drill holes all over the place trying to determine depth by trial and error. You simply spend less time looking and more time fishing. She's right there. There. There we go. We got her. Got him. Oh. Hey. Jeffrey, that's a good start to the to the evening, isn't it? Look at yeah. that. Just look at that. Eat that jig and wrap. Just a little yep. beat cooked. Look at that how they stick though. Yeah, no, that's good. It hooks that. No, that's a good start to the night. No, yeah, it's man. Walleyes. Can't uh, can't beat that. We're all walleye fishing, and yeah, you score that. Oh, they're put great. her back. Great fish. Big too. trout like this, you gotta let them go. Gotta let them go. They're precious. They're she goes special. Beautiful. Look at the fight we got out of that thing. So look at that. Look at that. Yeah. A little stickleback. Little stickle back back. Puked up. They eat everything. Little baits. Yeah. That little bait right there is probably. If I had one bait to pick for ice fishing, I mean, I fish that bait for everything. I've caught big trout, you've caught, you just caught a big trout on a perch, crappies, walleyes, yeah. everything. It's a beauty. All right, it's my turn. You just can't go ice fishing without electronics. They're the biggest tool that you can have in your game to have success. And this is a really cool unit that I've got here. I've got my flasher on this side, but if you'll notice right here, I've also got a GPS. So it's really cool if I've got a hot hole I'm walking around with the GPS. It's a lot bigger screen than a handheld. It's attached to the unit, so I can use this on the snowmobile. I sit it on my lap, I can look at it, and get it right on the spot. And then when, I, when I'm bouncing a hole to hole like this, if you're in a real specific area, I can just make a waypoint on that hole, come back to it. It's really super slick. This is a, a great, uh, great little handy tool to have for, for ice fishing. Everything, one package right here. All right, Jer, this is the spot, buddy. We're set up right now in a real classic late season walleye deal. We're fishing just out in front of a big area where walleyes are moving to spawn. We got all kinds of main lake structures out to the north of us where they're spending most of the winter. So our deal here is we're gonna try to intercept them. We got a nice big flat and uh, we should be able to hook up with some fish. Oh, man. <laughs> Talk about having to work a fish, man, to get it to bite. That was a Two or three minutes of him just up and down, up and down. For the primetime evening walleye bite, there's two real lure options that are players, uh, for jigging anyway, and that's the jig and wrap style of baits, and then of course the other one is spoons. And we like to, we've got a nice group of guys out here tonight, so we're mixing it up. A few guys have on spoons, a few guys have on the jig and wraps, and uh, a lot of times earlier in the evening like this you'll find a preference that the fish are more willing to hit a spoon or more willing to hit the jigging wrap style bait but then when it gets to that dusk time it really does seem like that uh, <laughs> if it's a jigging wrap or if it's a spoon or whatever it happens to be the fish really don't care so when that when the activity level is a little bit less definitely play around with those two styles the spoons and the jigging wrap see what they want and then prime time hopefully you pull whatever you got out of the back of their throat the 2 inch 516 ounce model W5 jigging rapala is ideal for ice walleyes and just about everything else that swims. It's a heavy bodied middle profile lure designed for vertical ice fishing tactics. Drop the jigging wrap near the bottom, engage the reel, then aggressively snap the rod to make the lure rise and scoot out to the side. As it sinks, the tail fin causes the lure to swim in diminishing circles until the lure comes to rest. Fish just love this swimming action, but the strikes generally come when the bait is at rest. Lure Jensen's half ounce Hus Lure and Crippled Herring Spoons are also awesome jigging presentations. Tip them with the minnow head to add scent and taste to the presentation. Oop, there he is, nice. This is right here, just right at the hole. 
love when they just crack it like that. It's a nice fish though. Not huge, but nice. Nice fish. Nice fish. Oh. Look at that. What a beauty. Huh? Look at those fins. Tell you what, prime time's the right time for getting big beauties like this up in Sunset Country. Look at that. Victim to the jig. Everything bites beneath the ice, and ice fishing hard water location patterns explains how to locate and catch panfish, walleyes, trout, and more during the winter months. It's part of our Angling Edge instructional DVD collection, available at anglingedge.com. Hey, most of you that are watching this show, I'm sure believe in the power of prayer and pray on a regular basis. Recently, I received from one of the ministries that's been a real blessing to me, this little card that they called a prayer guide. And I just want to read part of it to you. It says the keys to answered prayer. Does that get your attention? You start off with thanking God for the blessings in your life. You praise Him, you confess your sins, you lay hold of His promises. The Bible's filled with those. Pray in the Spirit, praying in Jesus' name. Avoid praying with vain repetitions. That means words that aren't backed with a heart belief behind them. Praying in agreement with other people, other believers. Then this one really, really moved me. It says, prayer is not overcoming God's reluctance, but laying hold of his willingness. Then I added one more scripture to it. It's Matthew 21, 22. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believe you'll receive them. Hey, I had to share that with you. I use this as a guide almost every single day. Have a good fishing season. We'll see you on the water. I sure want to take an opportunity to thank all our sponsor partners for making this show possible. And if you like what you see, let them know and support them. For more information, visit us at our website, anglingedge.com, and thanks for watching.